Stephanie is Tiffany's sister from Sierra Vista, Arizona, and is also Tiffany's maid of honor. Stephanie has a graphic design degree and in her spare time, loves to play the flute. She is also single, but now that Tiffany is officially married, Stephanie is the next in line. However, as Stephanie is also royalty, potential suitors will need to shower her with lots of gold and fast cars if you want to be her prince. Her escort, Philip, sometimes known as Monkey Boy, is a friend from high school and Joshua's best man. Philip aspires to one day rule his own kingdom, or at the very least, rule his own household. However, Philip's wife Marlene doesn't see that happening anytime soon, as she is enjoying the throne. Please welcome Lord and Lady Duke Philip Vaughn of England and Countess Stephanie McFarland of Scotland. For every happy ending, there is a beginning. For young Prince Joshua and Princess Tiffany, their humble beginnings were less than royal. Their story began only a short journey from here in Sierra Vista. Although Joshua and Tiffany originally met in junior high school, Joshua doesn't remember that meeting at all. However, Tiffany remembered enough to know that she didn't like Joshua very well. So when Joshua began dating a friend of Tiffany's in high school, she highly encouraged that her friend dump Joshua as quickly as she could. Although they inevitably broke up, it didn't happen for several months, so as a courtesy to her friend, she decided to be cordial and do her best to get along with Josh. However, as time passed, something happened. Tiffany began to feel that maybe Joshua wasn't so bad after all, and in fact, was even kind of cute. Their rather mutual dislike for one another began to fade away and was slowly replaced by an enduring friendship. Their friendship continued to grow for about a year until one night, Tiffany had a dream. Actually, it wasn't just a dream, it was the dream. Tiffany was getting married to her best friend, Joshua. The dream was so startling that it woke her from a sound sleep at nearly 2 a.m. in the morning, and there was no going back to sleep. She wanted to share this vision with Joshua. However, she didn't want him to frighten him into leaving the kingdom or cause him to hide in the dungeon. But feeling rather overwhelmed with this new revelation, she felt compelled to pick up the phone and call Joshua. The conversation began with, please don't freak out, but... Well, after telling Joshua about her dream and after an awkward moment of silence, Tiffany was not expecting Joshua's response. Oh my gosh, I just had the same dream. It was as if Merlin himself had cast a spell and changed the path of their relationship from just friends to now dating. At the time of their first date, Joshua did not have access to the royal treasury. So dinner was at McDonald's. But after sharing a Big Mac and their first kiss, these two young lovers set off to do what any royal wood couple would do after sharing their first kiss. They went to the park and had a sword fight. Winner would rule the kingdom. Of course, we know who won. <laughs> of course, we know who won. Girls rule, boys drool. By the time of Joshua's senior prom, formerly known as the Royal Ball, they both knew that they were destined to be together. Convincing the king and queen, Tiffany's parents, however, was going to take a little more time. About five years more time. Time enough to accept Joshua's transition from court jester to crown prince. This brings us to midnight of July 21st, 2007 at the book signing party of the latest Harry Potter release, The Deathly Hollows, held at B. Dalton's bookstore. Tiffany was working there at the time and was dressed for the occasion by wearing her Nymphadora Tonks costume. 
Unknown to Tiffany, Joshua had coordinated with Tiffany's boss to add a little something to the praise that Tiffany would receive for her hard work and effort on behalf of the book signing party. Joshua showed up at the party wearing a Remus Lupin costume, and when the time was right, he spun around, bent down on one knee, and in front of nearly 400 people, pulled out a ring. Joshua then asked the question Tiffany had been waiting to hear. Will you marry me? Well, Tiffany fell down to her knees and began to cry. Joshua asked if that was a yes, in which Tiffany responded, no, it's a no. Of course it's a yes. The adventure that began more than eight years ago continues this evening as Joshua and Tiffany join the celebration as husband and wife. Ladies and gentlemen, please bow your heads to the new king and queen, their royal highnesses, Joshua and Tiffany Tryon.